Coming up on this week's episode, Lyft Academy enters a workforce development program with Cape Air. Also, Navy announces initial aviation warrant officer selection board. And CAE completes acquisition of L3 Harris Technologies military training bids. Welcome to Airborne Flight Training, a program dedicated to all things flight training. From student pilots taking their very first flights to the new commercial pilot, getting ready to take on their first flying gigs and everything in between. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have an exciting episode today filled with the latest news, so let's go ahead and start with Lyft Academy enters a workforce development program with Cape Air. Leadership and Flight Training Academy will send a Lyft graduates to Cape Air in a flow program to provide Cape Air with a pool of aviators to operate its daily passenger flights throughout their four regions in the Midwest, Montana, Caribbean, and the Northeast. Upon completion of their flight training at Lyft Academy, graduates will transition to a first officer role at Cape Air until they are qualified to upgrade to captain status. As Cape Air pilots, they will build invaluable flight experience prior to flowing to Republic Airs. With Lyft's subsidized tuition and direct flow to Cape Air, and then to Republic Airways for its pilots, this comprehensive program will allow individuals with the skill and the passion for flight to make their dreams of flying a reality, said Donna Donati, General Manager and Director of Academic Services for Lyft. Their relationship will enhance our pilot sourcing initiative, an initiative that has been a significant focus for our company over the past 12 years, said Cape Air President, Linda Markham. Donati is one of the few female aviation academy leaders in the country, and Markham serves as one of the few female presidents in the airline industry. After the break, DPE Reform Working Group makes recommendations to ARAC. More news after these messages. Affordable and economical, Pipistrol is proud to present the Alpha Trainer. The aircraft can use as little as 2.5 gallons per hour in a flight school setting, with multiple students and instructors each day. This means that 13.2 gallons of fuel can effectively give you as much as 5 hours of endurance. Learn more about what the Pipistrel Alpha Trainer can do for you at pipistrel-usa.com. At Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the flight training industry, we're going to be summarizing some shorter but interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. DPE Reform Working Group makes recommendations to ARAC. The DPE Reform Working Group, which is shared by EAA, recently submitted a recommendation report to the Aviation Rulemaking Advisory Committee with a number of proposed changes to the designated pilot examiner system. In total, 12 recommendations were submitted to ARAC and ultimately will address a DPE selection standardization, mentorship, and a more efficient and effective landscape for scheduling a practical test across the country. Innovative use of technology and known best practices were all part of the 12 recommendations now heading back to the FAA for implementation. WAI announces 2022 scholarships. With new scholarships being posted weekly, the 2022 WA Scholarship Program officially opened on July 1st, allowing members to review dozens of scholarships. 
Currently, there are 98 scholarships totaling more than $479,000 offered for flight training, engineering, maintenance, dispatcher, drones, and professional development for individuals in all stages of life. Additional scholarships and internships will be added in the next coming weeks and months, with over 100 scholarships expected to be posted by the fall. U.S. Aviation Academy hosts second annual Aviation Discovery Summer Camp. U.S. Aviation Academy's second annual Aviation Discovery Summer Camp is taking off at the Denton Enterprise Airport on July 12th until the 16th. The summer camp gives high school students ages 14 to 18 the opportunity to explore the world of aviation, principles of flight, careers in aviation, aerospace, and more. Students get hands-on experience in addition to the ground school. Each student will have the opportunity to log their first flight in their logbook with a 45-minute flight in a Cessna 172. AEA spotlights new Aerospace Academy with FAA Administrator. AEA President and CEO Mike Adamson, along with a group of education, government, and economic development officials, recently met with FAA Administrator Steve Dixon at Summit Technology Academy in Lee Summit, Missouri, a career-focused academy designed to prepare high school students for high-demand professional careers. For more than two years, the AEA has partnered with the Lee Summit R7 School District and the University of Central Missouri to help develop the Aerospace Academy that will open for the first time in the 2021-2022 school year. ANN's Airborne News Program wins International Media Award. Recently, ANN's Airborne Video News Program hosted by Kimberly Kay, supervised by Nathan Cremesino and executive produced by Jim and Masako Campbell, won an International Media Award. For the first time in the Aero News Network's quarter century history, the network brought home a Bronze People's Telly Award for our Airborne Unlimited News program. People from around the world cast their votes and chose our show for the win. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. Navy announces Initial Aviation Warrant Officer Selection Board. A new era in naval aviation launches on August 2nd. When a board will meet to select the initial cadre of aviation warrant officers, who will be trained to fly the new MQ-25 carrier-based unmanned aerial vehicle, the call for applications announced in 141-21 and released on June 28th says that qualified sailors and civilians can apply for the program through Navy Recruiting Command. Applications to be considered by the board are due on July 26. Last December, the program's approval came when the Navy formally established the Aero Vehicle Operator Warrant Officer Specialty. Over the next six to ten years, the Navy plans to recruit, train, and send to the fleet a community of roughly 450 aviation warrants. The community is expected to eventually have warrant officers in grades spanning W-1 through W-5. Those selected for the program will first complete officer candidate school in Newport, Rhode Island. Upon graduation, they will commission as Warrant Officer 1. Then, they must then complete basic training as well as advanced training on the MQ-25 aerial vehicle. After these messages, CAE completes acquisition of L3 Harris Technologies Military Training Biz. I'll tell you for how much after the break. Swift Fuels proudly introduces the Forever Avgas STC. One simple upfront purchase entitles the Forever STC certificate holder to receive all current and future Avgas STCs that the FAA issues to Swift Fuels. The best part? It's priced today at only $100, and the prepaid certificate never expires. Get your Forever Avgas STC today at swiftfuelsavgas.com. I believe that if people use the Landing Doctor Training Program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're going to hear more about it. 
Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. Welcome back. CAE completes acquisition of L3 Harris Technologies Military Training Biz. CAE has announced that it's formally concluded the previously announced acquisition of L3 Harris Technology Military Training Business for $1.05 billion. As announced earlier, all regulatory approvals were obtained and now all other closing conditions have been met. The L3 Harris Military Training Business includes Link Simulation and Training, DOS Aviation, and AMI. L3 Harris Link is a provider of military training solutions in the United States. DOS Aviation is a provider of initial flight training to the United States Air Force. And AMI is a design and manufacturing facility for simulator hardware. The L3 Harris military training business will operate under CAE USA, headquarters in Tampa, Florida. L3 Harris Military Training will bring significant experience in the development and delivery of training systems for fighter and bomber aircraft, Army rotary wing platforms, submarines, and remotely piloted aircraft. L3 Harris Military Training will also bring a significant backlog and position on key programs, including the USAF Simulator's Common Architecture Requirements and Standards Program, USAF F-16 Simulator's Training Program, U.S. Navy Marine Corps F-A-18 Aircrew Training Systems, USAF Ground Base Strategic Deterrent Training, and USAF B-2 Training System. That does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with story suggestions or just to say hi. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.